Hello friends, today I'm going to show you how you can perform a CRUD operations on an API using repository pattern. So what is a repository pattern? A repository pattern is like it's, uh, we have interfaces, we have their concrete classes, and we would be inheriting from the interface. Uh, so the business logic generally doesn't lie in the controller section, it goes to another section where uh, you have all the insert, update, and delete, and search options there and then we present it to the uh, client. Let's have a brief look at it. Repository pattern in an API. What is a repository? A repository is a design pattern, is a general reusable solution to a commonly occurring problem within a given context in a software design. A repository mediates between the domain and the data mapping layers using a collection-like interface for accessing domain objects. Now let's have a look at the graph. So here, we have a client which interacts with the controller action, and that interacts with the repository, with uh, the repository is inheriting from the interface or the rules, it follows the rules, and then it connects with the entity framework or the DB context, that's the connection string. So after connecting the database, uh, the entity framework, we reach the database. So finally, the database is reached after the repository. So the controller does not have any direct relation with the database or the entity framework it will create another layer between the controller and the database. Let's see that in action. We are going to create this with an API. So as you know, I'm using Visual Studio 2022. So you have to select the, uh, once you create a new project, you select the ASP.NET Core Web API. So that's the one, then you create a next. Uh, you add the name, the location of the project, then you go to next and uh, you need to select the version that you are going to work out on .NET 6 or .NET 7 according to your choice. HTTPS, I'm not taking HTTPS, but you can take that uh, if you are uh, making it for a live project. Uh, create will have a new project with uh, only a controllers folder and uh, no other folder. You wouldn't have the other folders here. Once you have the project, it would be a blank project. So you're going to add uh, the models folder, the repositories, the data and the controllers that you need. So the first thing that we are going to do here is we will set up the NuGets. Okay. So we go to the NuGet package manager, manage NuGet packages for the solution. From the managed NuGet packages, uh, you need to select the first one should be entity framework core. Swashbuckle would be installed by default in .NET 6. So uh, we need these all uh, uh, NuGets. So diagnostics.entity framework core, Microsoft.entity framework core, entity framework core.sql server, entity framework core.tools. Okay, so these are the required ones. Once we have, uh, all right, just make sure that when you are installing, it should be the latest version of your project. So my project is .NET 6. I should select 6.0.22, which is the latest version of 6, not 7, okay? The latest version of 6. Uh, diagnostics uh, is also, okay. Uh, Swashbuckle, it does not relate to the project's uh, version, so you can, ver you can install it uh, any of the latest versions. Uh, the remaining ones, it needs to be with the latest version of the project, okay? Now, once you are done with this one, we will go ahead and set up the app settings.json. We would uh, put the connection string over there. Once the connection string is set up, we go to add a new data folder. I'm sorry, we will go to create a model. So we will add, right click on the project, add new. Oh, come on, I'm sorry. Uh, we need to have the models. First folder is the models. We need to create the model class first. So patient.cs, here I'm using a patient. Uh, so this is my table class or the model class. You can see these are the columns that I'm having in the table. Once you have the uh, model class here, we will have the data folder, add the data folder and uh, a class file named application DB context, which inherits from the DB context uh, base class. And uh, in the constructor, you need to initialize uh, this DB context uh, options, base options. And below that you mention the table name, which is going to be related with the database. So public virtual DB set. Uh, patient and name it with any patient's name or anything and that's going to create your database so this is my table which is created so patients is the name which i provided here and after you uh, do this db context you need to fix the program.cs without that it won't connect to the database so program.cs uh, should have your um, connection string with the default connection name so these are the two lines that you are going to put uh, in the program.cs so that it connects to the database once this thing is done uh, we need to have uh, yeah, the DB context, the model class, and the program.cs. Three things are uh, already done. So next, uh, remember that the application DB context remains inside the data folder and the model class remains inside the models folder. 
Now we will move ahead to the repositories. We will add another folder, name it as repositories. Inside the repositories, we will have two new subfolders. One is implementation and one is the interface. First of all, let's clear the interface. So the interface will have uh, right click on the project, add new class. And when you are selecting a class, select the interface, not the class. By default, the class would be selected. So you would be selecting the interface one, uh, the interface. And it starts with an I. That's the general naming concept. You can put any name, but uh, it's uh, suggested that you have interfaces with the beginning letter as I. So mine is, I named it as iPatient, and that's also inheriting iDisposable. So iDisposable will inherit, uh, will implement another method named as disposable, which is going to dispose your connection string or the DB context class. Okay, so we require that one. So inside the interface, I have one, two, three, four, five, five new signatures. What are the signatures? The first one will give me all the records, get all patients. Uh, then we have uh, one of the model type, get patient by ID, so single record. Next one, we will have create a new record. Next one, we will have an integer type update a new record. Why I have this data types integer? Because these are going to return me an integer value. And depending upon that, I will decide if it's a success or if it's a failure. So int delete patient and it requires an ID. Once the interface is designed, you need to create the concrete class or the repository class. So that will inherit from the interface. Now you see when I'm inheriting from the interface I patient, by default, it created another method named dispose. Okay, it will create this one by default, because I patient already inherits I disposable. So dispose is a method from I disposable. Now when I'm implementing all the remaining uh, uh, methods here, I will implement all those uh, methods, we will have to create an, uh, an object of the application DB context call that in the uh, dependency injection in like uh, using dependency injection and in, in instantiate or initialize it in the constructor then for the create one i will receive a patient type of data i will mark a variable named result as minus one if patient is null first i will check if there is any data inside the patient if it's null then i will return a zero else i will add that patient value and save the changes and return the id of the patient that is being created as the result now this is the integer value that we are returning back Similarly, we will also create one for the delete and one for the update uh, and one for uh, for the select. We will uh, show I enumerable because this is going to send multiple records okay, of patient type. Now, uh, for patient by ID, we will fetch the ID. We will use the entity framework, uh, the link use statement to get uh, the first record. I've, I have used uh, the ternary operator here so that if it's a null, it will get some value. If it's a null, then it will return null. Now it's returning the value of Y, which is stored here. For the update, I received all the data that are to be uh, fetched that has to in the patient. And according to that, uh, I will fetch one record from the database using that ID. And then whatever is received, I will update with that one. Okay. So you have to make sure that whatever you are updating, it has to be the old format. If you are changing just one or two columns, that column remains changed and the remaining ones remain the same. Now, after this one, I will return the ID that has been changed, else I will return one, minus one, okay. Now, these are the concrete classes or the implementations of that interface. Now, after this implementation of the interface, we will move ahead, we will create a controller class named anyone, anything of our choice, so mine is patients controller. In the controller class, we will not instantiate the application DB context. We will have no relation with the application DB context. We simply created an object of the interface. We will interact with the interface. So an object of the interface is created, initiate, instantiated, or initialized inside the constructor. Now, in the index, the first method I call is index that's recording, that's giving me all the records from the patient's table. And you can see that I have created a variable and that's of the object type uh, of the repository dot get all patients. This is going to connect me with the repository. The interface object is going to connect me with the repository and get me results. So if I have anything in it, then it will return me that. If not, then it will return not found. Similarly, we will go to the get by ID. We will fetch the ID. We will pass that as a parameter to the repository uh, with get patient by ID. And if we'll see that anything null is returned, we will say not found. If something is returned, then we will display that on the screen. Now create, I created as creates because I have some uh, naming convention because create is used inside the repository. So I, instead of having a duplicate uh, uh, action, I I try to make it a different one. So I will receive an object of type of the model class. I will receive the data of that uh, model type and I will uh, pass that one to the repository. 
and I will check if it is less than or equal to zero. If something is received, then I will say that it has been added. If nothing is received, then I will say it's a bad request and a message has failed. Now, same goes for the edit and same goes for the delete. Let's see that in action by running this one. So as of now, I have only one record in my database. You can see that that's the 24th record I have it in the database. So first of all, we will create a new record and then we will try to update that and we will delete that. Okay, so I ran the program, it's still running. So I will wait until it comes up. Uh, hopefully we already created different folders for different uh, classes. Repositories has implementations and interface in it. Models has the model class in it. Um, data has the application DB context in it. And uh, controller has all the controllers in it. Uh, Program.cs is separate. App settings is outside. Okay. We received that in Swagger because that's the default uh, loader in .NET 6. Now let's try to get, uh, let's try to create one. So we will go for the post request. It's asking us for all the parameters. We will not provide anything for the ID because that's a auto increment uh, column. First name I will provide, suppose, let's say, um, Sandy. And in the last name, I'll say peers. The age, I will mention 56. And the address, I will mention USA. The patient type I will mention as the inpatient. In the bed number, I don't need anything. I'll just put it blank. And diagnosis, I'll put blank. Now let's try to execute that. This is going to connect with the repository and give me, oh, we got an error. What is this error? Unable to resolve repository pattern interface while attempting to, uh, it's trying to get service. OK, so you see this is a message of service. What we need to do here, we need to go to the program.cs and we need to mark the dependency injection, builder.services.add scope or add transient or add uh, Add scoped, add transient, and add singleton. So I marked it as scoped, and I uh, put those. The first is the interface name, and second is the repository name. So these are both linked with each other. So we will uh, initiate the first thing we put is the interface, and second one is the repository class, and uh, put this line of code in the program.cs. That resolves the issue. We will save this one, and we will rerun the program. I hope this one doesn't make any errors this time, it should go through and give us the result. So this is one kind of uh, uh, decentralized architecture, or you can say that this is a loosely coupled architecture, which is not tightly coupled so that you change one thing and everything changes. No, you just need to make changes wherever you want and still the application would run uh, absolutely okay and do not have any issues. Now let's try to I'll record try. I'll not give anything in the ID. Let's say this is um, Robert Jones. Age, let's say 25. Address, let's say USA. Patient, let's say inpatient. Bed number, I'm not providing anything. Okay, bed number, it's an inpatient, so 36 LK. Diagnosis medication. Now I'll execute that and I will see that if it goes through, it will give me a success message. If not, it will throw me an error and it will show me a failed record. It says added 25. So 25th record is added now. Let's execute the database and see, yes, successfully added. Now um, let's try to fetch all the records using the get one. So I will go with uh, get all the patients and see if it's giving me all the records. I executed and it gave me two records, okay? Two records have been fetched using the index. Now I will go with the fetch the records by ID. So I will provide the ID as 24 and try to execute that. That's going to give me the 24th record and now I got the 24th record. So that is also working fine. Now let's try to update. So I will put try it before doing the update i will try to fetch the record 24th record and try to update that because i need all this data i cannot write all of it i'm going to put that one in the put and i will change this is jennifer canning so i will make it jennifer gomez and i will change her age to say 36 and i will make it as outpatient 
I will remove the bed number address let it be same I will just execute that and wait for the result updated 24 let's go ahead and check that in the database Jennifer Cummings let's execute that Idaho outpatient bed number is removed and diagnosis is vaccine uh, vaccine and last name is changed okay so now as this one is done let's do one with the uh, delete so we will uh, delete the 25th record now let's go to the delete and 25th it's asking me for the id i'll put it 25 here execute it gives me a message deleted 25 now let's check that in the database absolutely correct we found that 25th record is deleted one thing i forgot to mention so once you created the model class and the application db context uh where is it the db context and you have set that up in the program.cs with the connection string and the app settings is ready you need to um you need to do the uh, migrations okay so add migration and update uh, database that is required if you are creating this for the first time otherwise if you already have this project with you you already have a database you need to match the model folder with the column names okay and the data type should match if you already have an existing table so i already had this existing table i did not use the uh, add migration but if this was for the first time then you need to create uh, these uh, few files and then you need to put the add migration and uh, a short comment like in it I need or something and then you need after this one is a success it will generate a create table script and after that you need to update the database so these are the two commands you need to pass if you're doing this for the first time and your table is a new table otherwise you can just follow the same process and uh, uh, everything should work fine all right guys so i'm going to put the source code in the github repository and share that with you uh, if you have any questions any doubts you can just put that on the comments and i will be more than happy to answer you and uh, so this is just a simple one we will come up with uh, another distributed architecture i will uh, sh separate all these folders into different layers and we will also have a generic repository coming up so until we have our next set of programs Stay tuned, stay connected, and happy coding. Thank you.